<laughs> so, okay. So, um, how the space became available to us is that um, the new Center for Theater and Dance uh, opened up this year, which freed up this room, which used to be a dance studio. So, since the new building opened, this space became available, and we jumped on it right away to try to get a production space for our video and cinema and art tech. And at the same time, we were creating uh, 1901 Productions, which is housed in here. That is a student-run venture that is a product film production company doing short films, hopefully a feature. Um, we want to try to get one every other year or every three years, um, as well as like music videos, things like that. So creative narrative projects is what we do in here. So over the summer, what they did is they tore out all of the mirrors, they tore out all of the piping, added a little extra space for us on the side here. They blacked it all out, as you can see. We got some uh, muslin curtains to where we can control the light or make it a completely uh, dark box. The use of the space would be for uh, video production. So it can be, uh, we can have sets, uh, whether permanent or temporary built in here. Um, on generally we would think either side, but depending on the size, we could have multiple sets. So we'll, uh, that'll allow us to, to set our lights. Uh, we'll have a hot set. So what that means is we'll have the set built We'll have it uh, have the set dressing. We'll have it uh, decorated, props, all that sort of stuff, and then we can set the lights and leave it. Whereas before, we were kind of shoehorned into what space we had available for a small amount of time, and we would have to do soft breaks. So what that means is we would have to take down some stuff and leave other things and things like that. So now we have our own dedicated space that um, allows us to have multiple sets set up at any time. So one of the things we're really excited about is um, we're recycling the bars that the dancers would use form use to do forms. Um, instead of throwing those out, we decided to uh, take those bars and put them up on our ceiling, which will give us a lighting grid. Uh, what that'll allow us to do is not only be a lot safer by having uh, lights and cords and tripods off of the floor itself, but it also won't intrude on the set. So say the set is fairly large, we would have to find a way to get a tripod in here and um, not only it's unsafe, but kind of difficult depending on the size of the tripod then the size of the light and the modifiers on the light and all that sort of stuff. By putting it up on the ceiling, we have a much more safe and professional setup um, having uh, what they call top-down lighting. And with the, the lighting rig itself, they'll be on clamps so we can move the lights around. They won't be static. They can move anywhere we have the bars available to us. Um, and then we can, uh, of course, put all the modifiers and things like that up and above the ceiling, um, the top of the set, and we won't have to worry about it intruding on um, the actor's performance or getting in the way of the camera or blocking or anything like that. Uh, what also became available with this space is right next door over here, there was an adjacent room that uh, we're going to turn into an editing suite, um, a little bit of sound, uh, sound and audio, plus also storage, of course, but we also think of it as like a green room, um, a room for uh, hair and makeup, for actors and creatives to uh, relax between, between scenes or waiting for their turn on set things like that. And then what also became available uh, was an office of Brad Owens that became available, which is just right down the hall. And that is now the photo studio, which has a similar setup as this. It's um, half the room is blacked out, but the other half um, has storage facilities. It has two computers with the full Adobe suite on it. And it also has the large format printer. So you can print photographic prints or graphic design as well.